Hello everyone and welcome back to Desktop Dungeons. Uh, this is the second dungeon run of the second part of our low and log playthrough, which means we're continuing the Beginner Brigade quest so that we can cover the four basic classes and also get some gold to get us started. Uh, and, you know, hopefully finish unlocking the basic stuff. So, speaking of unlocks, last time we encountered gnomes in the dungeon, so we could upgrade this and have access to the gnome rates, which converts glyphs and other stuff for mana potions. Or we could uh, upgrade this, which has appeared because we got the shop scroll, and when we upgrade this, we'll have access to basic item shops in the dungeon. Now, I was hoping that we'd get the halflings, actually, instead of the gnomes, uh, in the previous dungeon run, because I was thinking of doing the priest next, and halfling priests are the probably the the standard optimal priests in general. Um, but we don't have them, so I'm going go to go do the wizard instead. And while it would make perfect sense to go for a gnome wizard because those are really good, uh, if we upgrade uh, for the gnomes, we probably won't have enough money to upgrade the halflings next. So I'm just going to get the shop. And you know, 200 gold, the trophy is worth 200 gold. It'll just nicely even out. So we're going to upgrade this. I'll just skip through the text because that's not what this playthrough is about. And we're going to go ahead and play as a wizard. And what kind of wizard? Well, we've already we've already played as an elf. Uh, and I haven't played as dwarf yet. And well, I'm not a huge fan of dwarves in general, but you know, uh, might as well. I'll ignore the preparations again. So, the thing with dwarves is that their bonus take it takes a while for it to be felt. Uh, let's just grab these uh, these glyphs as a dwarf, uh, as a wizard. I always want to explore towards the glyphs, and I'm gonna start taking on this guy here. And I have actually exactly what it takes because wizards are awesome that way. Uh, the thing with yeah, the thing with dwarves is that it takes a while to really start feeling uh, the impact of their health bonus. Because it's a it's a health per level bonus that you get, and so like I converted glyph now I only get an extra health. That doesn't feel very good. Uh, it doesn't feel like it makes much of a difference at all. And by the end you'll have a very nice health pool, but it costs a lot of of uh, of black space to recover all that health. So when you use it, and usually by the end of the dungeon you don't have that much left. So it's hard to leverage. There are very good ways of leveraging it, uh, but I'm far from. <laughs> the best uh, player for that kind of thing. Uh, oh, yeah, and while I'm at it, I should remember to cast get in there all the time. Um, and so, yeah, I, let's take this guy on. We have what it takes. And just wall to see through. Cast get in there again, because you should cast it every time you can. Grab I'm a wall. Don't know if I'll be using that, but hey. Open up some space here, because we might want this black space later. Just be going through the motions a little bit. Actually, no, never mind. When you can, and you know, you're just exploring, you can look for an enemy that you can attack without killing to recast, get in there, and stack some dodge. I think I've covered this before, but obviously, if you do that too much, eventually you'll just dodge and lose the lose all the dodge chance you've stacked up anyway. So, but you know, when when you're at 15, I usually stop around 20. That'll give us some more space. Level 3 Warlock. I can take this guy for sure. Right. Cast. Get in there again. Oops. Biceps. So I'll be casting these regularly. I might be able to take on this guy. Good question. Um. Yeah, I haven't talked about this, but these are potion shops. Probably won't be using them for now. Uh, so yeah, uh, so that's the thing about dwarves. Um, their bonus is pretty backloaded, and uh, it's a bit hard to leverage. Um, just like elves who get a very high mana pool, but you know they still recover at one mana per per tile. Uh, it's something that you really leverage best when you use your experience level ups to fill up your health. It's just that you know 
Elves of Mana Pool, it stays exactly the same as you level up, whereas Dwarves, it increases over time. Um, so yeah, I don't know how or whether we're going to be exploiting the Dwarves bonus at all in this run. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, in the meantime, the reason I'm taking so little damage, obviously, is that I've been stacking the resistance in this wall. Um, I don't really have much else to do with my resources, so I might as well just uh, get started on fighting this guy. Uh, actually, if I just get one extra tile, because, thanks to that lucky dodge that I've been stacking, uh, if I get two two hits I'll have enough for a fireball and for a strike but that won't be quite enough except that if I regenerate one extra tile I'll have enough to tank a hit but I haven't left myself one extra tile specifically because I haven't planning well enough so I'll just have to recover two and we'll see okay I, that adds up just fine get in there for the first strike and go Gasket in there and biceps right away before I forget um, casting this wall might as well just open up that one square in the middle here. Oh, and I could maybe start taking on this meat man. With the burning, possibly. We'll see. That, that that extra mana discount actually really helps for uh, re re regeneration fighting. You just get to chuck the fireballs more often. There we go, and now we still have, don't we don't have any other targets, so I'll open this up for later. Yeah, I couldn't just like hit this guy. Oh well, never mind. See, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? That's usually where I stop. Open up this place for that backspace later. Uh, level 5 zombie, I can take that. There comes a point late in harder dungeons where you s start ignoring zombies unless you're specifically tailoring your character to, to deal with uh, high HP monsters like that, but... Oh, well, let's see, there you go. For now, they're not really a problem. The single level higher, anyway. Mm-hmm. It's dealing 16, right? So I can stack some burning and then I'll be able to take this guy on, just like I showed in the previous video. Uh this one. Uh might as well just like eat one of these guys. I'll be fine. Probably could have planned that better, but oh well. And sure, I'm sure I can take this guy. Should have cast biceps there. And thanks to our our double stacking of burning, he gets that two stacks. That's just enough. Makes it just enough to kill him. So that's nice. So yeah. Just that extra glib discount alone, uh, and starting with fireball makes the wizard really strong in general for for basic dungeons like this. Uh, this guy we don't. Oh, see, at this point I could convert stuff and actually get just enough health to tank, which is one of the ways in which the dwarf's bonus is nice. 
And I haven't been using I'm a wall. I could I could be using it, but actually let's cast it once on this level one zombie. Now convert it. And uh we'll need to convert one more thing. I'm a bit hesitant to uh, convert to convert uh, my my potion either of my type of potions because I'm not sure exactly what boss we'll be getting. That being said, since uh, since I'm pretty sure we're not going to be getting a magic resist boss because we don't have any magic resist uh, uh, monsters unlocked, I'm not going to really need piss orf since I already have Ennis Wall to take care of that kind of thing. Pissorf is really is is a nice alternative to Brindaras as a direct damage glyph. If you can position the monsters uh, next to walls or other monsters, that way, because because knockback damage that it deals is physical damage, uh, so it so it bypasses magical resistance and it's not like other glyphs that have a chance of not not hitting if the enemy is uh, magic resistant. So it's nice to keep on if you know you expect maybe to run into a boss like Bleaty or the Iron Man as a wizard. But since I'm not worried about that and I have Endless Wall to get around, I can just convert it and get that extra little bit of health. I didn't need to recover to take all these three tiles, but whatever. And now see, and this this extra health really shines with the uh, the first strike glyph because then I have enough uh, have enough health and mana to hit it once. Uh, shoot two fireballs and then use get in there for an extra hit and I think that that'll do enough damage I mean my physical attack is doing 40 so times 2 is 80 and the two fireballs are 20 each which makes it yeah that's fine oh well my my physical damage was less than that it was because the biceps that was higher but but you know it ended up fine that's the kind of thing that can trip you over though if you're like tight on resources and trying to be efficient, so don't, don't forget about the, the variance that biceps causes. Um, I can't use D for a strike on this guy, but if I can combine Endless Wall's uh, resistances plus my higher health than usual to, if I stack a few uh, resistances, I'll be able to still uh, tank two hits, I think. Um, Yeah, there we go. And see that pr that probably wouldn't have been possible as a non-dwarf. So that's one way in which you can leverage the dwarf's extra health. Oh, and you know, dodge chance, I guess. Has nothing to do with the extra health, but when you're attacking multiple times on a high high HP, low level. Uh, the low damage monster like that, uh, biceps is actually a really nice boom. So don't forget to recast it. Okay, so Ekitas. Uh, okay, here's another uh, another perk of the dwarf is that you can actually get high enough health to tank a hit from this guy who has really high damage. I mean, 112 isn't so high for uh, for most characters because this is a normal dungeon. But uh, when he scales higher on harder dungeons, it gets really hard to tank. A hit from this guy unless you get magic resistance. Is resistance, so hey, even even though I've made it pretty clear that I'm not a big fan of dwarves, you, know, you can still use their their bonus. I just find it, I just find it's harder to use efficiently. You know, maybe I'm just wrong and I'm just biased against dwarves. Who knows? All right, I don't know that I'm uh, tempted. Actually, you know what? This guy, again. <laughs> Uh, I keep, I keep uh, getting reasons why that extra health is actually good. Why I should actually be happy with it. Uh, that being said, I want to make sure that because uh, I, I can cast biceps an extra time for that forty-eight plus uh, twenty-four is another. That t twice twenty-four is another. Um, so we're getting three times forty-eight, which is one hundred thirty-six. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, let's see, we have exactly the same amount of health if this guy has attack. Uh, which means that if I either convert one thing, or okay, we have a bloody sigil here, which I could buy. 
but uh, it, it would probably be at this point it would be actually more efficient to buy for conversion see this is an item that's really really nice when you get it early because that extra that extra regeneration boost means that you get a plus one regeneration per tile so at level one that literally doubles your regeneration that's really really powerful is if you have a fireball plus that extra health you can usually it's not impossible to take on a level two months a level three monster with just this thing in a fireball uh, but after that, that minus 10% damage actually really, uh, you really feel at higher levels, but it has a really nice conversion bonus, 45, and as a wizard I'm going to drain some some more from my glyphs. So I might actually just buy this to, for conversion. This is something that took me a while to... Uh, wait, I didn't actually convert it, did I? Okay. This is actually something that took me a while to figure out when to buy stuff to convert it. it that's something that comes with experience, I think. But uh, never underestimate the power of of, uh, of conversion fodder, basically, as it's typically called on the uh, forums. I'll wait a little bit for. Uh... Oh, there we go. Just enough. I don't believe I've encountered my sub dungeon yet. No, I haven't. Uh, that level eight meat man will work, I guess. Actually, it's going to level me up, isn't it? Yeah, it will. Uh, and I'm going to want to start fighting the boss now instead. So I'm not going to to kill him. However, there's a level seven around, isn't there? Did I not see a level seven in me? Oh, that zombie here. Oh no, it'll still level me up. Never mind. In that case, I'll just kill this guy anyway, since it's, he's never going to be popcorn. Uh, I'm a dwarf. I'm, I don't have massive attack bonuses, so I might as well just uh, take him on now that I can. I have enough uh, black space left to regenerate the health he costs me. Uh, might as well grab these potions. Precast these glyphs. Since I'm going to start fighting him. Uh, and you know, since I'm not, I'm just this, this is not the kind of boss you expect to uh, be uh, regen fighting, because that's really a question of how much damage he deals. Uh, I'll just clear out the explosions that left, because I might get a booster or, or see yeah, that, that those two items actually would be both perfect, and I have exactly enough gold to buy them, which is really awesome. Um, Fine sword is always good. I don't think there's like unless you're going pure, 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 pure caster, and that's very rare. Uh, that four base damage is actually really, really nice. It, it makes a nice difference, pretty much no matter who you are. And that pendant of mana is going to let me uh, f um, get 15 mana, which is three fireballs for the wizard. So that's very nice as well. Uh, and we're going to wreck this guy. No worries. Um. Oh, we have some extra, had some extra gold here. Where was that uh, sub dungeon? Did I? <laughs> there we go. Smart. Oh, awesome halflings. Exactly what I wanted. Give him a health potion. All right. That way we can play halfling priest next. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Uh, those aren't necessarily my favorite either. Anyway, let's get started on this guy. So. Thanks to my dwarfiness, I can get land a hit at level seven on him, which is pretty uncommon for Ikitas. And I have enough HP to tank a first strike from these little guys. Oh, that was a bit of a waste of a dodge chance, but you know, happens. And first strike, he's dead. There you have it. That was a dwarf wizard. Uh. And in, in which I started off saying that dwarves, I wasn't a fan of dwarves, and then keep kept finding like reasons to appreciate the extra little health bonus. So that was educa educational for me, if no one else. Uh, why not just uh, clear these guys out? Because I'm a wizard. Actually, I'm going to stop now because this is exactly the kind of situation where I start like not paying attention, and then I kill myself on the goblin, and then I start swearing for a while. I, I, yeah, this guy's good. Just making sure. And we're done. Okay, so that was a, a bit of a, a quick run. I, 
I'm, I'm trying to get through these uh, fairly quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on them so we can get to the really interesting stuff. But still, I hope that was interesting, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.